I have with me Dr. Umbawu, a general practitioner from Australia. Dr. Umbawu, you're very much welcome to the program. Oh, something, yeah, I think we're, okay, we're starting, but we're losing each other. Are you, are you there? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can see you loud, loud and clear, Dr. Ben Remy. Right. So you're very much welcome to the program. Uh, can you introduce yourself to the viewers, please? Oh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Femi Ben-Remy. I, I am Dr. Michael uh, Mbagu, um, a family physician um, currently working uh, in Australia, in Queensland, um, uh, uh, the principal at the Mount Isa uh, Medical Centre. Okay. Thank you so much. So today we're talking about uh, hypertension, high blood pressure. We know that a lot of people um, have different conception about what hypertension is. I, mean, I, have, I had a patient, I think last week, who told me that he had body pain and um, he had you know, pains in his joints and he feels that his blood pressure is very, very high because he has hypertension and those are the symptoms of hypertension to him. And um, so I, I think this time we'll be able to actually educate them on what hypertension is all about. So what is hypertension, please? Uh, thank you, Dr. Viremi. Uh, hypertension literally means uh, high pressure, um, a high blood pressure. And blood pressure is the, the pressure at which blood flows through the, the arteries. Um, when they're pumped uh, from the heart. Uh, we all know that um, the heart is uh, what pumps the blood. Uh, so the heart is like a muscle. It's also like a pump. And it pumps, uh, every pump uh, pumps out water or, or blood or whatever it, it pumps out at a certain pressure or with, with a certain force. So the force with which that blood, uh, you know, travels through um, the body out of the heart um, is, the, is the blood pressure. And typically we, we define it or, or um, write it out as two, two readings. There is what we call the systolic and there is the diastolic. The systolic is the, the, the upper uh, numerator in that uh, uh, right writing. And that is what I've just described. The denominator in that writing is the what we call the diastolic blood pressure, which is the pressure with, uh, at which uh, blood flows through, the, uh, through the, the, the arteries when the heart is resting, when the heart is filling up. So you have two pressures uh, when we talk about blood pressures. Uh, the one, uh, the pressure at which uh, blood is pumped out um, and also the pressure in the arteries when the blood, uh, the heart is relaxing and filling up. Okay, thank you so much. So in terms of how this relates to us as human, uh, what's, what, what do we need to know as, um, as, as a person, uh, adult? How does high blood, blood hypertension? How does it relate to us on our day to day? Uh, okay. You know, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I should have actually also uh, mentioned that uh, blood pressure. There is a, a range of normal limits, and uh, typically um, a reading um, less than one forty over ninety. Most people we know recognize the number 120 over 80 as being the perfect, so 120 systolic and one uh, and 80 diastolic. Uh, but for us, it's a range. So any range uh, less than uh, 140 over 90 um, and obviously greater than 90 over 60 will be regarded as a normal pressure um, for the heart uh, to function. When the pressure is above 140 over 90, persistently, um, that is not good for the body. So if you look at it as if um, water, even if water is flowing through a pipe or a hose, and that pressure, uh, the water is, is being pumped at a very high pressure. So we all know what, what, what can potentially happen. You can have a rupture of that hose or that pipe if the pressure were to be too, uh, too high above what it should be. So similarly in the body, uh, excessive, um, persistently elevated uh, pressure can and does cause what we call stroke. Uh, a stroke is where you have, a, it could be a brain bleed uh, due to a rupture of the vessels in the brain, or it can actually be sometimes ischemic stroke. Um, 
you know, that, that has been linked to, 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 to high blood pressure. There's also effect on the heart itself. Uh, high blood pressure can and, act, and does lead to contribute to uh, ischemic heart disease, literally a heart attack. Um, it does have effect on the eyes. We do have what we call hypertensive retinopathy where uh, the, the eyes are, is affected. It has effect uh, in, in, the, um, in the kidneys. So wide ranging effects um, and complications on the body as a result of a persistently elevated uh, high, high blood pressure or hypertension. Right, thank you so much. So, so yeah, you use the word persistently high tension. So what, what does it mean? When we say persistent, you know, uh, tension, how long are we talking about, you know, uh, yeah. for us to, to know? Yeah. Well, there is no, from persistent, I say, because from a medical point of view, we do not um, typically diagnose uh, hypertension um, at the first uh, visit. Um, so we'd like to uh, see the patient again um, at a later date, take a second reading and possibly a third reading if we have the luxury uh, of time. But having said that, there are occasions when um, if the blood pressure were to be too high, um, we will begin to, and, and have, and there are some other changes that we look out, look out for, we would actually start managing the patient or treating the patient, you know, from the first, uh, you know, at the first uh, instance. Um, so there is no time frame in relation to um, persistently, the persistence of the elevation. And that, that, Dr. Gunremi, lies the problem because most people with high blood pressure or hypertension uh, do not uh, display any symptoms. So high blood pressure or hypertension uh, can, and in most cases, asymptomatic, meaning no symptoms. Um, so by the time we're you know, seeing the patient, um, we don't know how long they've had it for, but you know, most of the time. Um, but, you know, to, I want to circle back to an earlier question that you asked me, you know, what does it mean for the patient? Uh, and also to relate it to uh, the patient that you saw last week. Those who have symptoms, uh, the symptoms might include things like headaches. So problems like headaches, um, if, you know, insomnia, not, you know, sleeping properly or difficulty sleeping. Uh, this can happen as, as a result of, uh, of hypertension. Some people might even have nosebleeds. Uh, um, because of high blood, you know, the high pressure causing, um, you know, the vessels in the, in the nostrils uh, to, to rupture and bleed. Uh, there could be dizziness as well. So high blood pressure can and does cause dizziness um, uh, in patients. There's also visual disturbances um, where there could be blurry vision um, or disturbances in vision. Uh, and this is, again, due to the effects of, uh, uh, of blood pressure. And um, when it's too late, uh, uh, Obviously, we can have a stroke, which is a, can be a complication, but might, might also be the first uh, symptom or first sign that something has gone awry when they have a stroke. And we know that when you have a stroke, you can have you know anything from difficulty with, with your speech to a weakness um, of your limb, depending on what part of the brain is affected. So a wide range, uh, wide range in symptoms that you can uh, display and complications as well. But yes, I do. There is no um, definite time to the to the persistence, uh, um, and, and that is the thing. You know, it is a silent killer because a lot of the time it is asymptomatic, and people don't know it um, um, that they have high blood pressure. So, how do we then, you know, uh, how, 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 what can the patient do? You know, because obviously we say, well, if you talk about the persistence now. It doesn't have any symptoms and meaning that somebody can carry this for, for a very long time. And then, you know, we don't want the, 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 the complication just like as the symptoms, like bleeding in the, you know, into the brain and things like this. So what, what, do, what, do, what do people need to do proactively to actually, you know, get this early or well, to find out early? Th that is very important, Dr. Bin Remy. And that is because, uh, hypertension is, it causes enormous uh, complications uh, and devastating uh, health uh, outcomes, uh, as, we've, uh, uh, as I've been saying. Uh, and in order to diagnose it or to screen the population, it's very simple to do in the sense that 
the technology required to do it is very uh, cheap and simple and the training um, required, you know, the expertise is very easy as well. And even nowadays, you don't even need any training because we have uh, uh, automated uh, blood pressure. So, so very simple measuring of blood pressure. Um, like I said, nowadays, there's the automated blood pressure machines. You can, you know, which can get at, at the pharmacy. You can get a pharmacist uh, to check your blood pressure. You can buy one uh, yourself, you know, from the, uh, at the pharmacy. Uh, and also, you know, if you see visit a health uh, professional, they can they can easily uh, check your blood pressure. So why population screening? Whenever you have a chance, um, you know, either you are the pharmacy or the doctors or visiting any health professional, uh, have your blood pressure checked. Know your numbers. It's important that we know our numbers. Know your numbers is very easy. It's one of the easiest things that you can check because, you know, it's simple to screen a large I swear of the population, very simple, very uh, easy technique. Um, so people should actually um, take up uh, any opportunity they have, you know, to get uh, screened um, and have the blood pressure checked. Thank you so much. You know, in, in Nigeria, most majority of our audience uh, will be from Nigeria. And we know that the health system in Nigeria is, you know, uh, is what it is. And um, people have to actually take a proactive action to actually do whatever they need to do. So um, what, we're, what we're advising now is that any opportunity, they should check your, their, their blood pressure. Or do we, is, there, do, do, is it necessary to do things on a regular basis or whatever? Just when they have the opportunity, get screened. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. So what I, what I am saying is that um, when you have an opportunity, always uh, avail themselves of that uh, opportunity and have it uh, checked. And um, and there's nothing wrong in people having um, an annual health check. And that's a very important uh, point that you've made, Dr. Um People should um, um, get into the habit of visiting their doctor uh, at least once a year to get a health check. Um, and during that visit, I'm sure you know, one of the things that the doctor will check will be their blood pressure and, and other things. Um, so at least an annual health check is very important, um, regard, regardless of if you have any problem, uh, problems or not. Even when you think uh, you're healthy or when you feel healthy, because we know that these uh, high blood pressure or hypertension, uh, you may not even display any symptoms uh, of it. So even when you feel healthy, please go to a doctor or health practitioner to get uh, a checkup at least once a year. And whenever you have an opportunity, because I know that in some places, in some countries, when you visit the pharmacy, there is a blood pressure machine um, at the pharmacy uh, and you can do it yourself. Um, you, can, you can check that from time to time and make sure I know your numbers. Thank you so much. So now, in terms of, um, you know, exposure to this let, 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 let me start how, how common is how common how common is hypertension really how it is very it is very common we know that um up to a quarter of adults uh, in the world have high blood pressure this is across the board uh, all over the world up to 25 percent of adults uh, will have high blood pressure and that increases um, um over the age of 60 to about 50 percent of adults Half of adults, uh, half half of uh, people over the age of sixty, would have uh, high blood pressure, and that is because yeah. as we get older, there is an increased uh, resistance um, in the arteries. The arteries harden, and the, the heart has to work a lot harder to push the blood through to uh, the body, and um, and then obviously um, the blood pressure is high. So it is very common. Uh, and also causes devastate the complication that it causes is also quite uh, devastating, making it a very important uh, medical condition to be aware of and also to manage. Right. Thank you so much. And then, in terms of age predilection, does this happen across all ages, or do we need to? Are there is there a particular age range that we need to be careful? Because people say when you are older, then you you're likely going to get hypertension. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the older you are, like I've just uh, been describing, um, over the age of 60, 
um, up to half of people in that age group would have high blood pressure. So yeah, so the older you, um, you we, we are, the more likely we are to, to suffer a high blood pressure. Uh, but anybody and everybody should be um, aware of, of hypertension uh, and also um, having their blood pressure checked. Because um, uh, maybe we'll come in, in onto this as well, because the, what I've described, increased arterial resistance, uh, that is a problem, you know, age-related problem as you get older. But there are other problems that can cause hypertension that you don't even have to be old to, to, uh, to, to have. Um, if you expose yourself to that sort of uh, condition. So even things like, we know the things like the contraceptive pill, which obviously young people take, uh, young girls take the pill, um, you know, is a risk factor or can and does cause, uh, can raise the blood pressure, for example. And um, even some medications that we take, uh, anti-inflammatories that we take uh, for pain and other uh, conditions can and does have effects on, on, on blood pressure. So it's not exclusively uh, a condition um, of the elderly or what happens as we as we age. Uh, it's there uh, potentially we can have it uh, in any age group. Right. Thank you. And um, it, so if our, uh, how do I put this now, in terms of what we eat, you know, people talk about salt. People talk about, or let, let's put, let's let's just group it together. What are the risk factors? What are the yeah. things? Yes. Okay. Well, we know that um, um, about ninety to ninety-five percent of cases of hypertension is what we call essential. So essential meaning um, we actually don't know why uh, people have high blood pressure or hypertension. Um, and, and by the way, that is a diagnosis of exclusion. That means we've uh, done a thorough uh, investigation uh, and digging around and we've, we've not found any uh, problems or any identifiable cause. Um, but um, that said, we know that there are environmental factors uh, that play a role. So obesity uh, is, um, is a factor in, in blood pressure. We should also be mindful of uh, um, a sedentary lifestyle, so physical inactivity. Um, so people who sit around all day and don't do much or don't, uh, don't uh, engage in any structured exercise, um, obviously that um, uh, puts them at risk of, of high blood pressure as well. Yes, you're right. Um, uh, the salt intake um, is a factor. Sodium. Um, so there, obviously, two th there's the sodium in, in the diet, um, uh, and, all, and there's also a, a problem with the sodium uh, pumping, uh, sodium metabolism in the body can and does lead to um, a high blood uh, pressure as well, um, contribute to it anyway. So, 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 so we know that. Uh, so healthy lifestyle, eating healthily, um, physical activity, um, being of the optimum uh, weight, uh, those are all important things that, that, you know, that we have to do to prevent and also to manage high blood pressure, hypertension. So if, if you do all those things, you're, you're, you're doing your best or your bit uh, to, to prevent. And also if you do have hypertension, that would help. That's the first step anyway in, in managing it. All the factors uh, that contribute to um, hypertension or that actually fuels um, high blood pressure Things like smoking, smoking um, and uh, blood pressure is, uh, there's a conspiracy always between uh, smoking, blood pressure and cholesterol. They all conspire to, to cause problems. Um, problems like, you know, the ones that we've mentioned, a stroke, heart attack and all the rest of it. So you have a combination of that. Um, so adding alcohol consumption as well uh, to that, you get a very unholy alliance there. Um, going to, to, to cause problem for, for, for the person. Um, so, so those are your risk, risk factors. But also, it's important to mention, Dr. Gunremi, that um, family history. So some people just have a family history of high blood pressure, of hypertension. So it's not a question of if, it's a question of when uh, they're going to develop it. And, and, is, you know, and over the course of their life, at some point, uh, they, they'll have it because you know, it runs in their families. Um, uh, uh, so that is that is important. Um, earlier on, I've also mentioned uh, some secondary causes of uh, um, 
hypertension. So I mentioned medications like a contraceptive pill, anti-inflammatories. Anti-inflammatories, I mean things like ibuprofen, you know, over-the-counter ibuprofen, Voltaren, um, they can cause high blood pressure. Um, and that is why if you're taking those medications, um, you probably need to consult your doctor um, while taking them. And you need to also be aware and take precautions while taking them. We know things like steroids um, increases your blood pressure um, and, uh, you know, and other things like that. So important to be aware of that. Um, renal diseases, renal conditions um, does cause blood pressure and other hormonal uh, um, imbalances in the body um, uh, can and, and do does cause uh, and blood pressure, high blood pressure as well. Right. Yes, Dr. Gunrami. Okay, so thank you so much. And then uh, now, in a situation where somebody maybe they found the way they got, um, you know, a machine, they check their blood pressure and they feel, oh, my blood pressure is high. What do we advise? What do we advise them to do? What will be the next step? Well, the next it depends on the setting. Um, so if they they need to see uh, a, a doctor or you know a health practitioner, and like I said earlier in the piece, that we do not jump into conclusion not necessarily um, at the first uh, visit, um, except the, the the blood pressure is above a certain. Uh, threshold then we have to start treatment almost immediately to lower it within hours but usually um is it important to uh, see a doctor the doctor might want to uh, take a second reading at a second visit or even a third reading and um and once it, it is established that they have a okay. hypertension high blood pressure then the doctor would advise a patient, usually we want to start with uh, lifestyle modification. Some of the things that we've spoken about, um, so low salt diet, increase in phys increased physical activity, modification of your diet, uh, if they have other risk uh, factors or the uh, behaviors that triggers or exacerbates the condition like ex excessive alcohol consumption, smoking, those uh, behaviors need to be modified. Um, and then it also, it's also important, and this is a, obviously a matter for the doctor to investigate the patient. So the doctor will engage in investigation, which might include uh, from urine testing to blood testing, to doing an ECG or EKG, um, a tracing of a heart, which is that, that, what that is, uh, and doing some more tests to, with a view to identifying what is causing the blood pressure. And, um, if the doctor identifies, uh, if there's an identifiable cause, that is great because the doctor can then target, treat the blood pressure and target the cause. Um, but if there is no identifiable cause after all uh, investigation um, has been, investigations have been done, then we know that it is essential. And in any case, the doctor will have to treat anyway um, with medication and ongoing lifestyle modifications. Thank you. So in terms of the management, now we've talked about the lifestyle, we've talked about the medication. Is there any other thing that, that can, I mean, that this can get up to, or um, uh, just to ask? Um, I think by the time you've done all of that, you're in, in the right track. Um, so a huge part of it, and it's important that we stress this, a huge part of uh, uh, hypertension management is uh, lifestyle modification. Um, either to prevent or to treat um, lifestyle modification, um, very important. And then obviously following investigation uh, treatment, usually with blood pressure medication, sometimes we'll have to go up to, uh, initially start with one medication, we might add other medications. You know, some patients might be on three or four medications uh, in order to control their blood pressure. And then obviously regular follow-up uh, with the doctor um, very important. Uh, thank you so up. much. Yeah, thank you. So um, we've had quite a lot of, you know, information around around uh, the blood pressure now, and I think obviously uh, we'll talk about the complications. You briefly mentioned them, but I want mm -hmm. us to just put them, you know, just wrap it up as we're really going to the end of it. To be honest. Uh, if we just wrap up, what are the what are the if if somebody refuse or they refuse to actually take care of um, or, or, or of their blood pressure, what are the consequences that can arise from this? 
the consequences will be, you know, severe, devastating, and uh, sometimes uh, grave. Um, so we're talking about top to toe complications. So uh, we've, made, we've spoken about stroke, um, which literally is um, the blood vessels in the brain um, rupturing and can cause any, you know, sometimes irreversible uh, damage to, to the brain, uh, ranging from speech difficulties to um, mobility issues, you know, sometimes blindness even, depending on which part of the of the of the brain uh, the, the humor the bleeding occurs so so not it not it's not something high blood pressure is not something you want to um take uh, lightly you take lying down so stroke is a big complication uh there's a heart attack um which um obviously is where when the heart is uh starved with oxygen you get an ischemic heart disease we've mentioned um, the kidneys. Uh, so high blood pressure in the kidney is not good for the kidneys. By the way, the kidneys, the kidneys are like a recycling plant in the body. So, so the kidneys, um, the body brings in um, waste products to the kidneys and the kidneys uh, purifies that waste and retains uh, for the body what the body needs and then uh, does away with what the body doesn't need in form of urine. So, so it's a very important uh, organ. So if your kidney, if you have hypertension and your kidney uh, fails, kidney packs up, um, if you're lucky, uh, you can, you're, that's you hooked on to a kidney machine all your life, uh, meaning that you would have to uh, have dialysis, we call that, three to about three times a week if you're lucky. So you would never be far away from a kidney machine, from a hospital with the facility. Um, um, and so if you're lucky, if you're lucky, you might get a donor, uh, which is rare. So very important that we try and prevent um, that from happening in the first uh, place. Um, so the complications are quite varied um, and can right. be quite simple. Thank you so much. So um, it seems high blood pressure, as we just take it trivially, a lot of people, you know, uh, just like I said, like the patient I had the other time, obviously he checks his blood pressure, bless him. But obviously to him, he has attached it to body ache. When he has body pain, when he's, oh, I've got high blood pressure, he, that's the time he wants to go and check his blood pressure. Now, um, just to address the viewers now, I think from what we've gathered from Dr. Mbabu today, it's very important and very crucial for us to actually check ourselves. Possibly during a bad day, just try and get your blood pressure checked, get your blood checked. Just do basic things because you don't know, we don't know those things, you know, that are just silent killers that are just running on the, on, on, underneath. Only when we check that we know. So, and if you check and you find something, you discover that your numbers are not right. Obviously, that doesn't mean that you have high blood pressure. It, might, it means that with, I mean, during the definition, it mentioned persistent high blood pressure. So your blood pressure might just be just one off, it's high. And then you're jumping about, I have got blood pressure. No, it might be an event at that time that's caused that. But you need to repeat it again. So you need to work with your doctor. And then uh, don't leave it hanging, please. So, Dr. Mbabu, thank you so much for, you know, for, for coming in today. As a last, you know, um, just, just, to, just to round up, what would be your advice to the people generally or to the government, just your final advice as we close this session? Thank you. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Femi Ogunrami, for, for having me uh, on your show and your program. Um, my advice to... Um, everybody out there is to take your health uh, seriously. Um, we only have one body, one life. And um, uh, our bodies are not like uh, cars or other uh, equipment where we can go to the shops and get a, a spare part uh, if they are diseased or damaged and, and replace them. Not necessarily so. So, it's important that we should cherish and preserve what we have. Um, and one of the um, high blood pressure hypertension is a condition that can, like I've said a few times, devastate um, uh, 
uh, cause devastating uh, complications uh, to, the, to, to, to individuals and can even lead to death uh, in terms of complications. Uh, so you, we have just one brain. You don't want to uh, develop a stroke and, and damage the brain. To prevent that, you have to A, know your numbers, B, live healthily, a healthy lifestyle, eat healthily, uh, drink wisely, exercise uh, regularly, at least half an hour of exercise uh, every day. Um, and if you do have a visit your doctor regularly, at least once a year, even if you feel great, still see a doctor because as we've heard, as I've said, high blood pressure oftentimes is asymptomatic, does not, you do not display any symptoms when you have high blood pressure, most people don't. So it's important to see a doctor uh, or get your blood pressure checked uh, at every opportunity. Know your numbers. And if, you, if it does need fixing, please get it fixed and sort it. You only have one body, one life. Thank you so much. You know, you touched on something which I really want to just mention again, alcohol. You know, the rate at which people drink alcohol in Nigeria, it's alarming. Uh, I know a lot of places people do drink, but uh, it's quite alarming to be honest, I don't know. So it's very important for us to actually get ourselves checked and reduce those things, you know, because alcohol gives you quite a lot of, uh, you know, you have, you have uh, a lot of extra load to carry when you drink so much of alcohol. And then uh, um, just, just, just get yourself checked, it's very important. Thank you so much. Know your number. I think that's the, the song that we need to sing from here know your number and act on it if there's anything that you find as abnormal. Thank you so much for joining us today for another episode. And then I look forward to meeting you guys again um, next week when we come with another topic. Uh, thank you and have a good weekend.